I'm going to show you how to set up a Next.js application and connect to a database with as little time as possible. So we have a Next.js app over here already created. I'm going to be using Drizzle ORM to connect to a database. And for a database, I'm going to be using SQLite, more specifically Terso as the host. This is not sponsored. I just like Terso. So let's just go to Terso, create an account, and I'm going to go to databases here and click new database. We'll just call that my app. Once your database is created, you can just go ahead and click on this. And there's two things you want to grab from this. There's a URL and there's also a token that you're going to want to generate. But before we do that, just go to Drizzle ORM. Let's go to documentation. I would recommend just go to learn, go to tutorials and do Drizzle with Terso. It's going to tell you everything you basically need to get set up. So first of all, let's just run these two commands. So that one's installing the actual Drizzle ORM and this one's installing Drizzle Kit. And Drizzle Kit is used for basically running the auto generation of migrations locally. If you read the caveats, you also need .env and libsql client. So let's make sure you also install those. So npm i .env and libsql client. This walkthrough is telling you how to set up the database using commands. We already did it on a UI, so we can skip those parts. Let's just skip down to here. In the .env, we need to add these two strings. So let's say .env, paste those in. And now for the connection URL, grab this one. And for the token, we need to generate one. So I just go ahead and say generate token. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I will copy this token and I will paste it right here. So first, let's make a source db index.ts file. And inside of that file, let's just go ahead and copy and put the contents. This is basically what you're going to be using in your app to tell your code how to connect to your database. And luckily, we already have these two environment variables set up. Second thing you want to do is you want to make a schema file. So let's just copy this code. I'm going to go here. I'll say schema.ts and I'll paste this in. This is how you can define what tables are going to exist in your database. In our case, we're creating a users table and a post table. And that post table has various columns in it called title which is a type of text. Last step is we need a drizzle.config file. So in the main root of your directory, say drizzle.config.ts. Go ahead and paste that in from the docs. Now this is telling DrizzleKit when it runs where the migrations should be generated, where your schema file is, what dialect you're using, what driver, in our case we're using Terso, and then also how to load in the environment variables. Okay, we're almost done. So now we're going to do an MPX drizzle kit push. And this is going to create, alter, modify, drop any tables that it notices when it's doing a diff between your current schema file and your running one. So let's go back to Terso over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and inspect the My App table. And notice that we do have two tables in this database now. We have a posts and a user. So the last thing I do want to do to make sure this is all working perfectly fine is I'm going to go to a page and we're going to make a form where someone can just submit some data. So let's just make a form and I'm going to add a button here called Submit. And this form is going to call a server action. We are using Next.js and we have access to server actions. So inside of this callback function, we'll say use server. And then we're going to say await db, import that from that location. And I'll say dot insert. And we're going to say post table like this, values. And then what we need to do is pass it some information. So for example, we can pass it a title. And I can say, please subscribe. We could say content would be YOLO. And then for user ID, we can just say uh, one. Now let's go ahead and run our app. So npm run dev and let's open up the application and just verify we can click on that button. So I'll click it a couple of times. One, two, three, four. Uh oh, so we got a little error. Basically you can't create this post entry because you haven't created a user yet. So just to hack at this and get this working, let's just go ahead and insert into the users table as well. And we're just gonna create a user with an ID of one and then give it some generic information. Okay, so now it should create the user first and then it should create the post table. Let's try it again. Click Submit. Then I'm going to check Terso. I'm going to go ahead and just refresh over here. And notice we have a post. Awesome. And we have a user's entry as well. So the very last thing I want to show you is how do you actually fetch that data back from the database? I'm going to put an async function here and I'll say const post is equal to await db.query. But notice there is no autocomplete for our tables because in our database connection, we forgot to pass it the schema. So let's just go ahead and pass it a schema and make sure we import the schema here. So I'll say import star as schema from that schema file. And now Drizzle knows that we have a post table and I can go ahead and say find many. And we just want to get everything back from the database. And so if I were to kind of loop over these, you can simply just display the post.title. And when the app loads, you'll see that we actually have a please subscribe entry that was fetched back from this post table. 
there you have it. That's how you can set Next.js up with a running database using Terso and also using Drizzle for the ORM. If you enjoyed this short, concise type of video, please leave me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, have a good day. Happy coding.